And I'm very proud to present to you Rowena Hannigan from Row Remote. And Rowena is Irish. She lives in Spain. She is location independent. And she first started nomading in 2007 in Indonesia. And she's excited and delighted to give her first in real life keynote in two years. Rowena. Yay. <laughs> so. What an utter pleasure to be here and what a lovely to see such friendly faces in the audience this morning. Delighted to say hello, especially to everyone who's joining live online. We can't forget those people. We have to think of them in this hybrid model. So it's wonderful to be here. And the first thing I want to say is muchísimas gracias, Gramila Mahagat, and thank you so much to Dubrovnik and Croatia. I see the deputy mayor is here. It's been a wonderful, wonderful welcome since I arrived, and I have had a fantastic time in this beautiful fabulous, so tourism friendly city. It's just wonderful. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I spoke in Spanish there to say thank you. And I also spoke in Irish Gaelic as well, which is uh, my language from my home country in Ireland. So it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to pull up some slides. What I thought I would do is I don't like an easy life. I don't like an easy life. So as I was looking through the program, and because I was here yesterday and I saw such amazing speakers and felt so inspired, I took it upon myself to try and do a summary across yesterday into today and bring through some themes that I feel really help us understand and appreciate the role of community in the whole world of remote working and the world, of course, of digital nomads. They're so interlinked. So what I've done is, I have two challenges today. I want to weave through that the, the themes from yesterday, bring them in and hopefully summarize them for some of you, maybe miss some of the talks yesterday. But also I want to ask about you and your role in community and ask you to think about that. So as we move along, I consider myself a global citizen. I've visited over 60 countries. I've lived in 13, try saying that with an Irish accent, 33 and a third, I've lived in 13. My daughter has traveled to 11 countries. She's eight years old. And for the last five years, we've been based in Spain. And we consider ourselves location independent. What do I mean by that? So if you want to find out a little bit more about me, you can look up Rowena Hennigan or Row Remote. But a big part of my story is how remote work enabled lifestyle, health, and saved my family. So when my daughter was two years old, she developed really bad childhood asthma in Dublin, and myself and my husband were frantic, frantic with lack of sleep and exhaustion. Any parents in the room might be able to empathize with that. Her asthma presented as really bad at night, so we had so little sleep for about 18 months. Both of us were work working remotely, and we said, why stay in Ireland? where it's damp, where it's wet, where she's struggling to breathe. And we decided, after some investigation, to choose Spain as our home. Without two remote roles, one, one of us being an entrepreneur, myself, and my husband being with the remote company, we would never have been able to make that move. So remote was life-changing for me, and I owe it so much. I see it a way, as more than a way of working. I see it as a way of living. I see it as a way of really, really changing your lifestyle and changing your quality of life if you can change location. So that's why I consider myself a global citizen and I embrace remote so that it can enable me, facilitate me, motivate me to travel and to move around the world. So I thought I'd share this with you. That's when we were last nomading across uh, Asia. That's on the Mekong in Vietnam. That's the three of us on a boat. And yeah, the really strong roots I feel and connection I feel to when we travel. Don't know if anybody knows what that flag is on the left-hand side. Some, some extra points there if you do. A lot of travelers in the room. And uh, of course, the Irish flag as well. And I, and I feel proud as part of that traveling that I, being in Aragon in Spain, if you haven't recognized it on the left, uh, that I speak Spanish and, and that uh, the Irish, obviously Irish heritage goes with me around the world. Moving on, I'd like to also give a little bit of an introduction before we talk about community. I love the image that the conference uh, came up with my little avatar, so I've added it in there. And if you don't know that much about me, as I said, you can look up on the website, but some of the highlights from the last few years for me 
has been, been included in many different reports, been named a LinkedIn top voice, presenting at the EU Parliament on well-being and home working and remote working. And I did a fantastic campaign with the Adobe last year, whilst in Gran Canaria, uh, nomading with my family for three months, looking at again at that element of how nomading and remote work can support families to travel and move around. So that's a little bit more about me. Moving on, I also wanted to tell you a little bit about my team. So I call them my team, but I'm working quite an interesting remote model that some of you might be uh, curious about. And it's very much a cloud-based model. I've met two out of the uh, two people from that screen there, and I've got seven, eight freelancers who are working with me remotely around the world, from Colombia over to Ethiopia. One of them is a refugee. We were talking about refugees yesterday. So I employ flexibly or contract flexibly a refugee who is Eritrean in Ethiopia. And anyone who wants any advice on that, offering contracts or freelancing, again, one of the examples of how remote can really, as Jacob said earlier, flatten the world, how it can make work and, and income accessible to everyone. As part of my day-to-day -day role, I am consulting, training, doing keynotes, but I also have a sub-part of my business that I'm building called Remote Work Mentor, and that's a, a service giving, uh, offering video consultations and support for people who are new to remote working. And you'll see on the one side there, we've got two insurance companies who are using that for their corporate clients at the moment in the UK and Ireland. So I'm building that out in a cloud-based model. I'm not a your typical founder, I'm a solopreneur, and I'm accessing resources and uh, working with my team in a freelance model. So moving on, let's get going on what I want to uh, cover today. So I want to focus in on what community means to you. Right? So I know there's not many, that many pens, I can see some uh, devices in the room, but maybe just take a moment and focus in on what community means to you. To prompt that, how did you feel last night? How did you feel this morning as we all got the chance to connect and have meaning, meaningful in-person time to get together? And then how you benefit from that, because I'm sure you'll maybe feel the warm fuzzies. I'm sure you feel a bit more connected and present in the world from real human connection and interactions from yesterday. How can you actively con contribute to that community? What does that look like for you? So maybe grab a pen, those joining online, maybe take a moment and think about what community means to you, what words come into your mind. What might help us here, and we can have short memories, can't we, a little bit like goldfish, eh? We can forget. What can help us here is to remember back to the times in lockdown when we didn't have that support when we didn't have that community. And that can often help us to remember and realize how important it is to us. No man or woman is an island, okay? Such a famous quote, uh, beautiful from Don, the poem, if you don't know it. And uh, this is, uh, Dennis Wiley took this, uh, took this along as well. To exist just for yourself is meaningless. You can achieve the most satisfaction when you feel related to some greater purpose in life, something greater than yourself. And when we visit a new place, when we work remotely on a team, when we, work as, when we move as a digital nomad, we feel those connections through small moments often. And it makes life meaningful for us. Could it make work meaningful for us? Could it make a place meaningful for us? Could it make culture meaningful for us so that we understand it, we can identify with it? John Donne's poem finishes off as well with a part about, don't ask for who the bell tolls, the bell tolls for thee. So that inspires that image of a community in the olden days with the bell ringing in the local church that's chiming for everyone. And that's what a beautiful, isn't it? An image to think of what community can mean for us. And moving on. So that experience of lockdown, that experience of having taken, commu taken community away from us, I believe that it brings us the opportunity to reset our communities around the world, our virtual communities, any community that we can identify and connect with. And even yesterday, I noticed that I felt more connection with some of the causes 
some of the stories, some of the examples that were shared. Because it's been so long since I've been able to look people in the eye, see their expression. Remote and virtual is fantastic, but for some connections, in life really matters, doesn't it? You really can feel that extra layer. So if you're struggling to find those words, get a picture of what community means to you, maybe think about lockdown. And yesterday there was a lot of talk about healing and recovering from lockdown. And I really feel that that's true. And if we move on as well from this, one of the tips that came up a few times yesterday and something that's really helped me, the word journaling, the word writing, to process out those extreme emotions, the word trauma was used yesterday, that whole experience of being locked down, which was so, so difficult. And sometimes when I would write during the pandemic, I would write about what I would hear in a day. As someone who became extremely popular during the pandemic and in demand, I often had to write out what I heard from stories in different locations that were shared online on sessions where I really couldn't believe how people were being impacted. One of the things that really struck with me as a mother with a child crawling all over me trying to work, so there was the horrors of the homeschooling, there was the horrors of being locked down with a family in a small apartment in Spain, but what really resonated with me was the people who were isolated and alone, working from bedrooms at inadequate desks and rolling onto their bed at night, being unable to switch off. So writing their stories down, processing out these different stories really, really helped me to not just only deal with my own distress, but also process out some of that uh, distress as well from them. So again, some of that might resonate with you in the room. So moving on. Yeah, that's what it felt like for me. This is the picture I felt when I went home last night. So it was really about the day yesterday of having those connections, of making it meaningful again, being in person with people and laughing. Last night we had such a good time on Banjay Beach, sharing those moments and laughing. And there's nothing like listening to a room with live chatter and laughter and people enjoying their times together. And again, hopefully those online, you won't have long to wait, but hopefully I'm, I'm helping to illustrate and inspire those thoughts so that you reach out in the real world again for that connection. Moving on. So how did you feel last night? Come on, it's not all up to me. Shout out some answers after that real life connection. What did you feel last night after meeting everyone? In the excited, excited? Inspired. inspired, alive. Alive, I love it. Anyone else? Grateful. Grateful. <laughs> Tipsy. <laughs> Tipsy with connection. Love it. I'll interpret that in a certain way. Anyone else? Present. Present, Present with people. Present with people. Fantastic, so sit in that feeling for a moment, sit in that feeling for a moment, because that's going to help inspire you to be a contributor in a few minutes. So moving on, yesterday we had so many stories, we had so many offers of support, so I'm going to focus in to be mindful and be also sympathetic to what's going on in Ukraine. And I felt those warm moments again yesterday when Oris shared so honestly and the offers of help that he received from being open, from asking for help, right? And that's an illustration on a grand scale of what we can do on a small scale if we really, really try as well. So that came through yesterday and I thought that was a particularly poignant moment. Aaron loved this one. How we relate to work has fundamentally changed since the pandemic. So I'm gonna summarize some of the key points from yesterday. That made me shiver a little bit because I felt he was saying it for the whole world. It was a fabulous presentation. It really has changed. It really, really has changed. How has your relationship changed with work? Some prompts for you again. What about to others around you? Then we moved on as well and we heard, Sarah, I loved it, embodiment conscious leadership, conscious in business. But she said, whole people with whole lives. Darren Murph from GitLab, fantastic podcast interview the other day. He said, work is no longer about work, it's about life. And as leaders, as advocates, we need to care about the whole person and what they do outside of work as well, because that's 
what has happened since the pandemic. And it is a bit challenging, but I honestly see it as a totally new opportunity for us. So how can you make meaningful connections with the people around you and work? How can you embody some of Sarah's advice? How can you be conscious, be vulnerable? How can you do that inner work? That was a prompt as well. How, Mandy, so inspiring as well. What are your core values? I do value work a lot with some clients. I do it myself with my own mentor. And my values, I'm a, if you want to put a label on it, social introvert, believe it or not, I love my quiet time, okay? I actually can be quite shy, right? Um, but I know well enough that I need those social interactions. In my core values, since COVID, I need more of this. I need this. It's why I go to a co-working space. There's only three of us in it. I don't sit at home isolated in my work because it means that I can meet with people. So what are your core values? Have they changed? Is it time for a value review? And then when you've looked at those values, keep aligned to that North Star. Look to those values. Write a few summary words down. Does community fit into your values? Hell yeah now for me. That's why I made the effort to come here and meet all of you, to look you all in the eye, because I need you. I needed you during COVID, and I will continue to need you to do the work that I do, and also to live the way I do. It's my whole life now. So it's so important. It so does it for me. Thank you. Values. Values, we all have different values. That's one of my values meaningful time with my family. That's why I work hard, I work smart, so I can do that and I can travel. And that's why I need community. John Lee yesterday was on one of the panels. He's got a nomad family. He's been in Thailand. He's now in Kashkaish. I'm hoping to see him over the summer because it's so amazing to find people who have the same dreams and inspiration for their families as you do. So all these connections can be made with our communities. Dr. Irine, I don't know if I've spelled that second word right, her surname, but take the self responsibility to do the inner work for your community. Are you okay with silence? I am, because that is a really powerful statement. If you do that reflection, that values, if you take that self responsibility, you can, through that inner work, do for your community what you see everyone around you that's holding this space doing during this event. The wonderful production team, the amazing organizers, the hospitality staff, the delegates from the different parts of Croatia that are here supporting us. So if you do that, you can, you can really support your community. So I love that statement as well. I wonder what that means for you and you might wanna take a little mental note of that. Next. And Marty, thank you so much, Marty, right? How can you be an ally? So we had such honest sharing yesterday. How can you stop? This is one for me. This is a big takeaway for me. Uh, how can I intervene, stop? When I see something that I don't agree with, when I see a microaggression, how can I speak up? Because I don't do it as much as I should. I'm nervous like everyone else. And how can I be an ally? Okay, so how can I be an ally? An ally can also mean, oh, you know, I support them in that pastime. I support them in that interest. It doesn't have to be, Marty's example was fantastic, but it doesn't have to be even as, you know, as strong as that. It can be in the simple things that we can do. I've already reached out to a few people in the room and said, come to me if you need support, or I can connect you with this, peep, this person. Again, all these things matter. So another prompt for you causes and parts of the community resonate with you? What really struck a chord in your heart? From introversion to gender, to pastimes, to things we like to do, find what matters for you and help people and support them where you can. I don't know who said this one. My note taking wasn't quick enough. Will you let me off? Will you let me go? <laughs> Culture is how we show up for ourselves and for others. Sarah, Sarah, thank you. Thank you. See, I knew there's such an interactive audience. I knew they'd correct me. So culture is how we show up for ourselves and others. Thank you, Sarah. How do you show up 
each day. It's such an overused term in a way. But how can you make the small moments matter? And also, how can you show up with honesty, integrity, vulnerability? Because guess what? It's whole human time now. We're not all perfect. We're going to have a headache some days. We're going to be lack, have lack of sleep. We're going to be tired. We're going to be crap. I come from a culture where people say, I'm grand. How are you? I'm grand. No, it doesn't mean I've got a grand of money of thousands of euros or dollars. It means I'm fine. And we never answer anything else. So one of the things I've learned with my remote team is I'll go, no, actually, I'm bad today. Or today is a three out of 10. We use that on Slack, for example, to say, no, it's crap. My daughter was up sick or whatever the reason. It doesn't have to be a reason because sometimes we just have those off days. So how can you show up? So if you can't show up, there was a quote that's overused on the internet that says, get dressed, you know, turn up, show up, be ready. No, you don't have to show up 100% ready. Show up as you are and be honest about it. And we'll be doing everyone a favor. So how do you show up? How can you show up? How can you make those days matter in your work, with your community, as you travel? What resonates for you? Can you show up honestly? Can you show up with intent? Oh, we've got a little bit of something going on in the slide there. I don't know why it's done that. But I wanted to give you some language because what I wanted to do, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pulled it into small font, but we'll manage with that. What I wanted to do is one of the things that I've learned, and we had Jacob on from Butter as well talking about remote facilitation, and I really believe remote facilitation is a huge skill in the future. Uh, it will be a huge skill in the future. And one of the things that people don't obviously, or know, especially if English isn't their first language, and as someone who speaks in Spain, I get the language challenges you may have, is the use of language. So rather, and, uh, you know, as a, a, a university professor as well, rather than give you all these lovely slides, I also want to give you some language that might help you in these different ways you can contribute to community and you can connect. Anything else? Tell me more. How, what, where, and when, describe that to me. Any of those kind of statements that when someone speaks and you actively listen and you're interested, you ask more. How can I support you in any way? Can I help you? Is there a way I can help you? Then look around, this is a prompt for you. Who is silent? Who isn't contributing? How can I include and involve them? How can I invite? Julian Stodd, if you don't know him, is a big inspiration of mine. Humble leadership and is his is, is subject area. And he always says, look for the silent people in the room. Look for the people who don't contribute. Walk up to them afterwards. Invite them. Send them a message if they like the messaging better. You know, a little message if you're connected with them. Was there anything else you'd like to add? So keep that door open. Moving on. And Dean. Had to get you in there, Dean, the king of digital nomads. And remember that power of saying yes. So on the previous slide, it was all the ways to ask, the language you can use, that open, uh, hinting on to nonviolent communication, that open language to ask about how you can contribute, how you can show up for your community. But remember, when someone comes to you, if Yvette, Mandy, you know, if Dean comes to me, if Hannah, right, if Rutha, and they ask, Remember the power of saying yes. So see we joining the dots there? It's the response, okay? So you can contribute to a community by saying yes. So when Mandy held the, the, the get-together that she mentioned, the people who said yes were showing their support. They were showing their contribution. And we sometimes think if we're not fully involved leading or hosting or holding space in a community, but you can contribute by showing support and saying yes. Community. So what I'm hoping I've done has got you thinking about how you can contribute. Even better, when you might contribute. What that's going to look like. I wonder if some of you have a little vision in your heads. I wonder if there's some visualization coming in of when you've said yes, when you've offered to run something, when you've held space when you've hosted, whatever. Because in community, it's about what we do as humans to make it work. And finishing on, finishing up from Mandy, I love it so much. 
contribute and pass the torch. So there's some of us that are more experienced in the room, there's some newbies. Contribute, host something, do something, make something happen, like that spark. And then, as a born teacher, it's in my generations of blood in Ireland, pass the torch. And pass the torch is moving on to the next person who can guide, who can lead. And sometimes when you ask that person, when you invite that person beside you, would you run the next host, the host session, the next dining session, the next meetup? That is the invitation they need in their life to be a community leader. So please do that. Last two thoughts. What is the one thing you could do today other than shouting out your answers, because that was contribution, so thank you, to add to our community? Could you start a conversation? Could you offer a hand? We do it even in our daily movements. Could you offer a connection, an introduction, host an event? What else? Join me in keeping our glue together of our global community and let's keep moving along in that wonderful spirit of contribution. Thank you.